Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is the ultimate guide to Roblox Lua scripting. Wait a second, Code. How can you claim that this is going to be the ultimate guide? Well, because if you look at everything that you've ever done trying to learn how to do Lua and Roblox and scripting tutorials, tutorials are great for learning examples and for learning how something is done, but it doesn't teach you how to program. You could say, like, I, I know I can sit there and watch tutorial after tutorial after tutorial, and I wouldn't learn anything. <clears throat> so I'm not going to teach you how to script. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you how to understand how to get the answer, not how to, like, do something specific. All right, the first thing that you need to understand about Roblox is Roblox is programmed in Lua. It's got its own environment. It is not like Lua itself. It's a, like a special part of Lua. It's like a specialized Lua version. I could show you Lua if you wanted to, and we could tell everything about the tables and awesomeness and the variables and how they work. That's not what this guide is about. This guide is to show you how to learn Lua, how to learn about Roblox. So I'm inside Studio. Basically what I did is I went over to my development tab, clicked on Create New Place, named it the ultimate guide to roblox lua scripting so now i have a new place called the ultimate guide to roblox lua scripting blah 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 blah. right great perfect <clears throat> the first thing you need to understand about the roblox environment is everything falls underneath workspace this entire th or, sorry not workspace game so game is like the ultimate highest table in the entire thing okay game contains everything Game.workspace, game.players, game.lighting, game.replicated first, re replicated everything. What am I talking about? Well, think of everything as being like a table. Um, the name of the table would be that object. So for example, workspace. Workspace we could see as a singular object by itself with a whole bunch of like <clears throat> key and value inside of that. So you got key value, key value, key value. And it doesn't matter what these are. These could be an integer. These could be a string. What are you talking about code? I'll get to those in a second. They could be a function. They could be a table, whatever you want to think of them as, but think of all objects as tables. Okay. What do you mean? Okay, cool. So let's get right in here inside workspace. I've got camera terrain, base plate. I can think of these three things as object. Um, down below this, I've got a whole bunch of like over here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff like data, class name, current camera, blah, 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 blah. All right. If I were to just create a brand new script, let's go insert object and we're going to say script. Boom. All right. Print hello world. Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. I don't want to print hello world. Let's get that out of there. <clears throat> so this, uh, I'm going to create a variable and what's really cool about the variables like, um, okay, I am going to explain a little bit about Lua scripting. So, uh, I'm going to say string, this string equals test and this int equals one and this table equals, um, blah and blah two okay and oh why not and we'll do it print okay oh, 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 get that like that and then this funk equals print so what are these the left hand side is a variable a variable can be named anything well mostly except for keywords and I'm not going to tell you what those keywords are. You're going to learn how to look them up. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, this string, this int, this table, this func, I could call them anything I wanted to. But the thing in the middle is an equal sign. And I'm assigning something to it on the right. So the left-hand side is a variable. The right-hand side is something. It could be anything. And what I've done is this string equals a string. This int equals a number. This table equals three things. It equals... Oh, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Let's make this even more fun. Uh, one comma print. This table equals blah one print. And then this function equals print. So now I'm going to do print, just like we were doing before, this string. Print this int. Print this table. Print this 
func. Now what I should get in return is this string is going to print out test, this int is going to print out one. This table, however, is going to, should print out an address and this func should print out another address. These are, don't, don't worry about what these actually are. These are like the location of where these tables are. So let's hit F5, see what we get in our console. Down here at the bottom, oh, I don't see it in my console. All right, so if you don't see the console, click over here and output, output, output. Boink, there we go. And down here at the bottom, I have no way of getting, oh, I do, there we go. So we have test, one, table, function. Okay, and they, they show the, the addresses. So the reason it's print out table is because it couldn't print the actual like array of things and table or function, it couldn't print out what the actual function is. So stop. I hope I've got you guys thoroughly confused because you're gonna go look these things up and you'll you'll see what I mean in just a little while. So this is great, that works. I'm going to use a function that I know called type. All right, that way you can see what type of variable these things are. Type. And instead of printing their actual values, type, oh, let's just do this faster. Type, I should have just done copy and pasting, but that's fine. And then that, and then that, boom. Now we should get their types. String, number, table, function. Um, there are some other things like floats and doubles, and but we're not going to get into that. I'm going to teach you where to go and find the answers. Ugh. Okay, so you can think of everything as a table. Everything as a table. So when I say this, this table, and then I do like one, like that. Here, let's, let's get this out of here. Let's get these out of here. This table equals a string, an int, and a function. And I, I could actually add something else in on the fourth variable and say blah one and blah two. Put that all in parentheses. If you notice, this right here is in between the brackets. So that fourth object, which is actually number three in the array, because, <clears throat> okay, when you think of tables, this is array zero. This is the first object. This is the second object, one. This is the th third object, two. This is the fourth object. Oh, gosh. There right, we go. This is the fourth object, three. So when I do this table one, I'm going to say print, print this table one, it should give me this variable. If I said print zero, oops, 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 oops zero, it should print blah. So let's just try that real quick. We should get a blah. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Oh no. Yes, I want to apply the changes. By the way, thank you Roblox for taking the scripting that you're doing during a live thing and applying it to scripts or asking to apply it to scripts if you've made a change during the live play. You used to not be able to do that. I used to make all kinds of changes to scripts, forgot that I was actually running the game and be like, oh no, I've got to type that entire thing over again. So that's a huge plus on you guys. Oh, I got a nil. Why did I get a nil? Hold on. Let's go back. This table. Oh, I didn't. Oh, maybe it is one. Oh, gosh. Did I just tell you guys wrong? I may have told you wrong. All right, stop. Do you want to apply the changes? Yes, I do. All right, now play. Blah. There we go. Okay, so I told you guys wrong. I am wrong, and I apologize. So in Lua... The, this is the first thing. So when I said these brackets, uh, square brackets, one, that's actually the first value. Now I'm going to teach you about a loop. <clears throat> a loop is a nice way of doing things. You might see a lot of times while one, blah, 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 do something and then end. Oops, I got caps locks on, end. So basically this right here, this statement is an infinite loop that is going to continuously do whatever's in here, print uh, blah forever. Let's give it a wait of how long do I want to wait? Uh, let's, let's say 10. Print blah forever. So if I do F5 on that, we should see, oops, there's a, a do needed near print. Oh, <laughs> stop, go back to scripts. While one, do, there we go, print, there we go, blah. 
and then 10 seconds later it should go blah okay let's stop 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 let's go back over to our script i don't want to wait 10 seconds 10 seconds is way too long three seconds every three seconds it'll say blah so blah and blah times two there's there's a little times two there if you look blah three four five oh gosh can you guys you guys can't see that at all can you I can't even zoom in on it. Ugh, darn it. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back over to the script and let's do something. Uh, let's say x equals oops, x equal, equals one, and then I'm just going to do inside here x equals x plus one, and inside here we're going to do print dot dot x like that and give it a little bit of a space. By the way, little double dot like that, that means concatenate. Take this value and add this value at the end. Uh, it does not mean plus, so you can't do like one dot dot one equals two, that doesn't work. Um, this is concatenate. It, it means take this and add it to that. So go, go, do your thing. Blah one, blah two, blah three, blah four, awesome. Okay, so that is a simple while loop, but it's for infinity. It will never stop. So if you've got a game that's not supposed to stop or you've got a certain function that you're supposed to be doing that never stops, fine, do that. And if you ever need to break out of that, you can literally do a break like that. But we have to have some kind of condition. So if I do this right here, it should only print blah one time and never again. Uh-oh. Expected. A break on the while near the wait. What? Oh. Blink. Like that? Maybe like that. Like that. That'll work. Blah one. One, two, three. No blah two. Where's blah two? Blah two is supposed to be going, right? No! It's because we broke out of it. Perfect. So I'm not, I'm not actually teaching you like the scripting part. I'm just teaching you the simple syntax so you can go and do the things later. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We will get there. I promise. I, I will do this all in 30 minutes. Okay. So now that we have a basic understanding of the functions and things like that, uh, let's put in an if statement. So wait for one second. If X, oh wait, if X is equal to uh, three, then we'll add a tab in there so it looks nice and clean. Then end if, now it's just end, which is always confusing. Okay, if x is equal to, not assigned, notice the double equals three, then break. So we should get blah one, blah two, blah three, and then it breaks out, let's see. Five and it's gonna one, two, three. Oh, it didn't print. Why didn't it print? Okay, stop, stop. Something's wrong with my thing. Oh, that's why, because we did the x equals x plus one afterwards. So x equaled three before we could actually print it again because we were doing the print up here at the top. Hmm. Oh, I can correct that. Let's put a zero up here at the top. Not that it really matters, but cut that. Put this down at the end after the if statement. No, that's still only going to do one, two. Hmm. We are. All right, let's put it right here. Blink. There we go. That way, x can equal three because then it's going to print and then it's going to check to see if x is equal to three. There we go. One, two, three. Done. Breaks out. It's done. Infinite loop is broken. So what if you don't want to do a while loop? Or what if you want to do something along the lines of four statement? For, um, for x equals one to 10 step one, do print x. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll leave it like that. I don't need to break it. Boom, so it already printed like one through 10, and it did it really fast at whatever increment that it does that particular script in. Now what we're doing is we're doing for a specific amount of time. Um, we want to start at this variable, end at this variable, and go with this many steps. 
what that means is how how do you want me to count? Do you want me to count by twos? Do you want me to count by fours, fives? If we do it by fives, we're only going to get two values. It's five and ten, or one and six. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. If we want to count by fives, we would start at five, go until ten. There we go. Five and ten. There we go. Stop. Anyhow, basically what I'm doing is I'm teaching you the simple for statement. For x from 2. Now, what if you want to do something with this table? I know that there's four objects inside that table. I'm going to say for e in, is it i pairs? No. e comma, no. Let's do x comma y just for fun. They're just variables. You could name them anything for... Um, key comma val or um, blah blah two does not matter what I'm going to use is X and Y just because they're easier for me to remember which is really bad programming don't follow that example use use meaningful names for X comma Y in I pairs this table do that says I want you to take this table and I want you to tell me what the X and the Y are. The X and the Y are zero, or sorry, one equals blah, two equals one, three equals print, four equals this table, okay? And that's what the I pairs is going to do. So in here, I'm going to do print X comma Y. This is going to do a print with a tab and a Y. Go, do it. One equals blah, two equals one, uh, three equals function, four equals table. Perfect. That did exactly what I wanted it to. So you can think of this variable, this table, as a table, where the value on the left, and or sorry, the key on the left and the value on the right. What if we were to do this something bigger? Workspace. Game dot workspace. Do print x dot y, or x comma y. We'll just get rid of that table and go. Oh, it's going to be big. Oh, bad argument in I pairs accepted got object. Ooh, that's right, because it's, it's huge. All right, what if we just do pairs? Maybe pairs will work. I hope it'll, it'll work. Bad argument with the pairs. Oh, no. Okay, table expected and got object. Okay, maybe that's not going to work correctly. Maybe I can do base plate. Well, the script's already in there, so let's do this. Um, let's do insert part. All right, so there's my part. Whoa, there's my part. This part you can think of as everything else. It's just like a uh, thing. Dot part. Okay, so there's a part inside the workspace. Game.workspace.part. Hit F5. Let's try that. Oh, gosh, I hope it works. No, bad argument. And pairs. Oh, I need to do I pairs. Stop. This could be completely wrong. I, I might have this completely off. I pairs. I pairs expect we got object. No. I don't know why that's not working. Worked perfectly fine in demo. Oh gosh, code. This is turning out not to be the perfect ultimate guide. Yeah, it is. It still is. Because if you think about part as being the main object, you have brick color. Oh, sorry. Brick, uh, not brick. Brick color. And its value is uh, brick color dot medium stone gray sorry let's do this medium stone gray oh, 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 oh. all right so uh let's get out of there take those out game dot work get out of there game dot workspace dot part not parent part dot brick color equals brick color medium stone okay so let's jump back over to here 
right click and let's change this medium stone gray to like a blue now if i hit f if i hit f5 it should change back to the stone gray somewhere no it didn't why didn't it change no what about just gray can we just call it gray stop bad argument brick color brick color expected and got nil brick color expected and got nil why did it get nil what if I just say gray gray oh oh oh, 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 oh. let's try this no a table value Attempted to call global brick color a table value. A table? Another table? Okay, this is not working. All right, let's go back into our script. Part dot brick color. And I'm telling it, brick color dot, oh, dot gray. What? Why is it just dot gray? Okay, that worked. For some reason, I was able to call it as a function. What? What? Why is it a function? It should not be a function. Okay. That doesn't make any sense to me. Actually, it does. Okay. Let's do this. So, if you think of everything as being a table and everything being um, a specific instance, that's what everything else is. Everything falls under the class instance. You can instance anything. So if I said blah, a variable equals um, new dot instance, no instance dot new equals instance dot new. And then I told it it was a part, part, oops, part. Boom. That right there, blah, is automatically going to become a new part. But this part only exists inside dot game or game dot part it doesn't have a workspace environment yet so i'm going to say blah dot parent equals game dot workspace uh yeah just like that <clears throat> this should put it at position zero 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 i think just in case blah dot po blah dot position equals uh, vector three dot new, just like an instance, zero comma zero comma zero. Boink. I hope that worked. Hey, look at there. There's a new part that I'm standing on right below me. That is awesome. By the way, that one's still cyan, or yeah, it's still blue <laughs> because I left it there and I, I removed the color changing part of the script. So anyhow. As you can see, it didn't actually exist. What did I just click on that gave me that? What? Okay. Oh, it's it's ultimate saving. <clears throat> okay, I might have lost some of you right there with the game.workspace and the vector.new3, blah, blah, blah. These, again, are instances. A vector is an instance. Uh, game technically is an instance, but workspace is an instance. Um, what do I mean by that? Let's go here. Um, click on view and this is the part that you guys have been waiting for this is the part where I'm going to teach you how to teach yourselves go to view go to start page and you're gonna see this which is great and all switch to classic view actually no you shouldn't have to up here at the top where the address is take that out and put in HTTP s colon forward slash forward slash wiki dot oh gosh there we go wiki dot roblox dot com forward slash index dot php please work no that didn't work why didn't that work oh okay that's their anti ddos thing just take out the s http colon forward slash forward slash wiki.roblox.com if you're in your own browser like if you're in chrome or you're in something else go check it out in there if you've got your phone next to you check it out on your phone it is mobile friendly wiki.roblox.com forward slash index.php 
What does this do? This takes you over here to where you can get tools, you can get APIs, you can get tutorials. I highly recommend doing those tutorials, but don't just watch them. Literally put them on your phone, put them on a second monitor, bring up your studio and go through them. Pause that video, do it on your, your screen. Pause the video, do it on the screen. The only way I know how to get really good at programming is to take those pieces of code that I learned from a tutorial, change them around a little bit play with them. Do what you're seeing on the screen. If something's not working correctly, or if you've typed everything correct, look for sand text errors, look for a period in the wrong place, look for a bracket that's not the same. Little things will cause you grief. And that's what debugging is all about. Now, let's head over to this one, API. You click on the API. This is a full reference. It is a living guide of all their API class references. For example, hat, it's got a strike through it. That means it's deprecated, which means it's either going away or they're not gonna be using it anymore or it's changed in significantly in the way that it's used. Um, read through the first part because it's going to tell you about the 3D interfaces, the adornments, the animations, the avatars, all these different instances that fall under specific things values global values it's all here if you've ever wondered about something like one of these objects over here on the right hand side what is this part let's go over here and let's look for part okay scroll 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 i've gone past p elemental p there we go base part Part right there. I click on part. What does part mean? This will give you a description of what it is, the properties that you can change them to, what type of value that property has. So a bool would be a zero or a one, a true or a false, on, off. That's what a bool is. Float is point something. So it can be 1.3, 2.4, 7.9, whatever. Uh, an int is a whole number. So a one, two, Three. These are whole numbers, like they're they're not in between a number. They're not two and a half or two and three quarters or two point two five, two point one two five, whatever. They're specific integers. Um da -da -da -da, down 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 down. Vector three is a type of object. It means X, Y, Z coordinates. Uh input type is I think that's just a one, two, or three, but it's an, an enumeration to that specific item. Surface type, that would be, um, is it made out of rubber? Is it made out of wood? What kind of surface is it? Things like that. And by the way, if you don't know what surface type is, click on it. It'll take you, hey, this is what a surface type is. It's an enumeration value. So if I were to put in the value zero there, it would say, hey, that is smooth, makes the side appear without surface details, blah, blah, blah. If I put a one, it would be glue, again, keys and values, a big table. Now the description doesn't actually appear anywhere. This is just added in there, but this is what an enumeration was. Somebody asked me the other day, they were like, what does enum mean? It's enumeration. It's a key and a value to something. It's a collection of things, which that's what all of Roblox is. It is a collection of things, a collection of functions that are working in conjunction with each, with each other to create a game. That's pretty much how all programming works, mostly. I mean, but Lua is very, it is very table-ish. They're, they're all tables. So go out here to the API. And I promise if you start reading through the functions, you start your curiosity here, you're going to get a lot better scripting. You're going to get a lot better at building and scripting because you're going to understand what those objects are. I know this is kind of boring, kind of dry because there's no background music and there's no flashy lights and there's no editing whatsoever. But this, I'm telling you, is going to be the ultimate way that you are going to start learning how to script and learning how to program. I didn't teach you anything specific. I taught you some very basic syntax. Go in here, figure these out. Um, the one that I was playing with was the other day, fire. I wanted to know about the fire, fire, fire. <clears throat> Hold on. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Where is it? I can't see it. Hold on. Can I?
can I can I do a search on here? I can't do any kind of search, can I? Oh gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, I'm probably not gonna find fire by the time we're done here. Ooh, VR service. I'm actually very interested in that. But it looks like my time's up. Anyhow. You can check to see if something's VR enabled. It looks like it's going to be a read-only property. It comes true if any VR device is detected by Roblox. Ooh. Could possibly enable some, I don't know, um, Oculus kit, dev kit twos. Especially if, it, if Roblox detects that there's a VR gear or a HTC hooked up, you can be like, hey, let's make this 3D. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of, uh, oh sorry, this isn't an episode. Thank you everyone for watching this ultimate guide to Roblox Lua scripting. I hope this has been helpful. If it's not been at any point, any kind of helpful to you at all, put it down in the comments below. If it's been the ultimate guide and you really think that you've found a way to learn programming awesomely and start your career as a developer or a programmer or whatever you want to do, put it down below. Hashtag thanks or hashtag awesome. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below if you could. And check, check, check it out. It's pretty cool. I'm serious. It's awesome. <laughs> Go check out the rest of my, my channel. Um, I'm going to do an outro. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.